How you doing, YouTube? It's Will from Will Development. This is my 325th weekly update. I say it almost every week now, but those numbers are really climbing up there, huh? 325 weeks of updates. Sorry. It's kind of cold, so I'm trying to rub my hands, but I felt they needed to be a pop, too. It's not even that cold in Florida right now, but it's uh, colder than it's been, so it's one of those, like, it's cold, you know? I always enjoy jacket weather since we don't get very many days of it here in Florida, so. Anyway, this week's been going pretty good. I finally sat down and finalized slash wrote a program, and I'm sticking to it. For the most part, there's always... <clears throat> I always write them in ways where I can sort of substitute this or that, or uh, skip certain portions of it based on sort of RPE, and it's uh, it's basically going to be a very slow linear progression leading up to the comp, but it should put me in a good place and get me stronger in general, just based on most of the numbers that I know I'm going to have to be doing during the comp, I'm already there, so to speak, so now I'm just using the time right now to sort of build on what I already have. Uh, get better at certain rep works because some of the events are going to be rep events such as the I, I forget what he's calling it now originally it was like the Bavarian stone lift essentially it's a deadlift that starts at the shoes and it's similar to a sumo style deadlift but it's not really your feet are going to be a little bit closer together than that for this particular lift but it's going to be reps so I said okay I need to definitely start doing more reps with deadlift style and then as I get closer to the comp I'll actually transition that to the appropriate height uh, which I believe for my weight class is gonna be like 300 pounds um, if I get like 10 with that I'll be pretty happy uh, in the past I've been able to rep 325 conventional deadlift for 10 or 345 something like that so rep works never really been that big of an issue with me uh, assuming the weight's somewhere around 80%, I can usually rep it out pretty good. 80% or lower, I should say. Uh, now that definitely goes for upper body. Lower body, yeah, you know, it's it, it could be better, but I'm working towards it. And then there's going to be a rep event for the overhead, too. It's a 150 block we're going to be doing. And that one's going to be a little tougher. Blocks are pretty tough. I mean, on a barbell, I could rep out 150 today probably for eight um, without stopping just in a row um, push pressing obviously uh, with a block it's gonna be a different story it's a little more unbalanced I don't know if we have to pick each rep that sort of thing so I will practice a little bit of both and go from there I'm actually pouring my 150 stone this weekend so I should have it by next week to actually do the practice with it and I'll swap out one of my press days uh, with that I We'll probably do it on Saturdays just because that's more of my free slash alternative press day. I usually do like a log or an axle on that day as my pressing movement. And it's always a little bit lighter. And 150 is a little bit lighter for me, um, although that block will definitely be something to be working working towards just because of the awkwardness of it. So I've also been incorporating things like sandbag pressing, really awkward lifts to try to get used to pressing in that compromised position. So, anyway, the beauty of having a program actually written out is I can actually, you know, quote what the hell I did and be, uh, be accurate with it, right? Uh, assuming I took accurate notes, which I did. So Monday started out with squats and deadlifts, did sets of four on everything, worked up to two sets of four, Squats, 275, uh, remember this is high bar, ass to grass, and uh, those are pretty damn good. I was, I was very happy with how those went, and then deadlifts went to two sets of four at 365, and uh, pretty happy with how those went as well. Tuesday, still doing the regular thing that I do where I basically push jerk until form goes bad, and then transition into a push, pre push press, and then do... Uh, strict pressing as an accessory. So, push press, uh, jerked uh, up to 155 for a set of four, which uh, is a PR for me. I've never been able to do 155 for more than like two with really good form. So, 
155 felt good. I actually did go for another one, but it didn't work out so well, so I just said, nah, that one didn't count. And then push press went up to 165 for sets of six. So you see what I mean about the, the block, or about a barbell with 150, I could probably do eight in a row pretty easily, uh, given that, uh, especially if I actually went down and then straight back up and down and straight back up. I purposefully, right now, am practicing going back to a dead stop and then restarting the rep um, just to get used to that dip a little more. And then as time progresses, I will get more into the habit of, as we get closer to the comp, uh, essentially just dipping right into the next rep, uh, just to cut down on time, because that's what really matters. And then did some strict press, uh, five singles at 140, supersetted with a bunch of other accessory work I was doing. Wednesday off, Thursday, deadlifts and squats. Um, <clears throat> took quite a while on my squats, um, just because I got distracted, honestly, it's just not, it, it wasn't anything, but I was doing sets of eight, and I did two sets of eight with 245, and they were all very pristine, uh, really probably could have done like 250 or something like that, but I remember last week, um, when I was doing, you know, sets of six, I, I, I did 245, so... To be able to do that for sets of eight with good form felt good. And then I wanted to play with the axle deadlift just to play with it. Uh, it's a little more challenging. And I, I'm because I'm not doing any exact deadlift, I decided to play with the axle. And I went strapless just because I was lazy. And uh, worked up to a single at 315. Um, I was doing double overhand up until like 285. And then when I got to the 315, I pulled one single double overhand. And I was like, ugh. And so I did mixed grip. Um, just to do it. Pulled a single there and I was like, I feel beat up and tired. Let me just do some sandbag work. So I did like 20 reps because I had another guy there and he would pick it and put it over his shoulder and I would come up and do the same thing. He ended up tapping out around seven or eight reps. He, he just couldn't do anymore and I just kind of kept going and luckily he was counting and he said I must have done at least 20 reps, which that math kind of checked out. And so I was like, cool. So I just did like 20 just with the 135 bag, single motioning it over the shoulder, uh, alternating shoulders, really working on my single motion explosiveness uh, to help with the stones a little bit. And it's not direct stone work. Sandbags can be more difficult, in a sense, because they're a little more live. Uh, but they transfer well to stones, so... Uh, plus it meant I didn't have to be outside where it was like... It wasn't even that cold, but it was windy. And by the time I got to that, I was sweaty, so when I stepped outside, I was like, whoa! And the wind is hitting me, so it's way colder, especially because I'm, 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 you know, my shirt's wet and stuff. But it is what it is. And then benching tonight. Um, bit of a kind of a deload sort of day for it. Been doing, uh, you know, really sort of low reps with it and alternating push, uh, pause, press, and touch and goes. And I did touch and goes tonight because that was honestly on the protocol, right? Uh, or the alternation, and uh, did sets of 10, three sets of 10 with just 225. Um, right when I got under it, it felt good, because I was like, okay, I've still got this. I've still got 225 for 10. I uh, haven't actually touched that in a while. Uh, a few weeks ago, I had done 225 for like seven, and that about killed me. So to do three sets of 10 with it, I'm like, cool, so I'm getting back there, get the strength back. And then next week, I believe I'll do sets of four with that. Um... Yeah, sets of four with that, so, and it'll be paused. So we'll see what happens. I'd like to do 275 for sets of four paused, but we'll see what happens. Uh, again, it's one of those sort of RPE, how I feel on the day thing. And honestly, I was like, I'm pressing tomorrow. It'll be another overhead type pressing day. So I just did a little bit of incline bench work with some moderate weight, you know, things I could get sets of eight with. I think I got up to like 70 or 85 per hand. And I uh, just called it there at a moderate incline. It wasn't, normally I'll do a much steeper incline, but I was like, yeah, it's a bench accessory, right? So just, you know, somewhere around 45. And so that's what it did, and that was the week. There we are. I actually was just looking over it, and I was like, ooh, I've got to do some more work. Some of the, some of the things are wrong on, the, on the, the sheet there, so I'll have to work on that this weekend. 
explore whenever I get to it. I'll get to it. I will. So yeah, that's the week. Been super busy with both stone orders, which is awesome. I like I like having a lot of stone orders. Um, get the name out. A lot of new names too. Uh, contacting me for for more stones or, or four stones, I should say. And that's great. You know, I like when new people. I like meeting new people too. That's that's honestly the best part of doing this whole stone making thing. It's just meeting all the new people and it's awesome because then when I go to a comp it's just like hey this person knows me hey this person knows me and that's a that's a really cool feeling uh, to just sort of go somewhere and it's very familiar you know because so many people know you and I really like that and I enjoy that so you know I actually uh, and I'll, I'll turn this into the ending I had a comment on my five-year-old now god it's five years old my very first stone I ever made which was using the plaster mold method. Essentially you take an exercise ball and you cover it with plaster, deflate the ball, take it out, and then fill the void with concrete. Didn't know anything what I was doing with any of it. I didn't know how to work with plaster. I didn't know how to work with concrete. None of it. It was all a big mess. And the stone, I still have it. It looks like hell. And it's rough. And, and somebody had commented, you know, essentially just, just buy a mold, you know, like Jeez, just buy, buy a mold. And, I, you know, I've, I've gotten multiple comments like that, and I always respond the same way. I agree. Honestly, yeah. If you want to do it, just buy a mold. It's, you know, or find a buddy who has one, that kind of thing. Because it's, uh, if you don't know how to work with plaster, you're going to end up wasting a little bit of time and a little bit of money. And you'll probably get better results if you just use a mold. Um... Again, because you have to understand how plaster works, you have to understand how to work with concrete. And just understanding how one of those things works is, is you know, I'm, what, six years in making stones, five, five or six years in, and I'm still learning things about how concrete works and how to use it in a particular application properly, you know, that kind of thing. So it's, it's, there's definitely a lot to know. And if you can take one factor out, which is, you know, building a mold, if you can just buy one, just do it. If you have the capability to, yeah, I say go for it. Just use a mold. Um, it's definitely easier, you know. And, uh, but I, I said, you know, that experience was so shameful and, and tough. I didn't use the term shameful, but that's really how it felt. Um, that it, it shamed me into wanting to be better. And I believe the phrasing I used was to get good at, or at least competent, at making stones. And now I can say I'm definitely more than competent. I'm, I'm to that level now where I definitely have confidence in my work, um, just because I've done so many, I've been doing it so long that yes, I know how to make an atlas stone. Yes, I know how to make a good one. But I wouldn't be here five years later, hundreds of stones, a lot of, a lot of, a lot of bad stones, a lot of good stones, uh, more good than bad, but every failure I still keep in the back, and I keep it right near the pour station so I can look over and be like, okay, I remember what went wrong here, don't do that, what went wrong here, don't do that, you know what I mean? Um, I have a stone that looks like a dinosaur egg, you know, because I didn't put enough duct tape, so now I overkill it and I coat the entire stone with duct tape. Do you have to do that? Not necessarily, but I will not let what happened to that stone happen again. Uh, mostly because I have people relying on me to get X, Y, and Z done in a certain time. And so I can't, you know, what's, duct tape's cheap enough, just use a bunch of it. You know, it's, it's not going to hurt anything. In fact, it's only going to help keep the stone more spherical and protect your molds too, keep them from getting all, you know, concrete uh, waste on them. You know, so it's, uh, it was a learning experience, and I'm glad I did it, and I'm glad it shamed me into becoming Florida's Stone Man. So, the closing statement would be, don't, you know, <laughs> don't look too far into what you're about to do, because a lot of times fear of knowing what could go wrong is going to keep you back. Jumping headfirst right into something, and then failing miserably will build your character if you can deal with that loss, which you can, trust me, you can, and it will make you better at whatever it was you failed at. 
uh, because you will never want to experience that pain of failure again. And that's how I got with stones, and that's why I own every mold Slater makes, except for the 12 inch, because I haven't really found a use for it. Um, nobody's ever requested one. Uh, I may just buy one at the beginning of the year just to, just to buy it, uh, just to say I've got them all. But <clears throat> that's what led to who I am and what I am today, you know, and, and how people look at me, you know, although that's, that's the stone guy, you know, that's how people know me, and I love that. But it's only because that first stone was so awful and so taxing in so many different ways. So with that, don't fear holds you back from greatness, right? And if you do, then what's your excuse?